I'm Adam, and together we're going to be taking the road to what? Dracula's <laughs> Castle. Which is the only way you're officially allowed to say it. <laughs> and so it may be the goal of most travellers here, as the largest country in Southeast Europe, Romania has so much more to offer. So I'm going to be doing my best to visit lots of popular and off-piece places to give you a good idea of the things you can do along the way. It's by no means an all-encompassing guide, as Romania is quite big and I'm not made of money, or lay as the currency is here. What am I made of lay? But I think what you're about to see is a great example of getting the best out of a weaker. I'll be interviewing people I meet along the way to learn about Romania's interest in history and to find out what makes it the country it is today. And because I wanted to fit in as much as possible, I chose not to stay in Bucharest the first night after landing and I caught a train north to Transylvania. And as I was slowly lifted into the mountains watching the weather change around me, I could see just what attracted Romania's royalty to build their castles amongst these snow-capped peaks in such a beautiful region. And a great place to start my journey into Transylvania is the snowy mountain resort of Sinaia. The town is a great introduction to just how eclectic Romania and its history can be. For instance, it has strong ties to one of the oldest aristocratic families in Europe, the Conte Casino family, who, after returning from a tour of Egypt, built a monastery here in 1695, modelled on the St. Catherine's Monastery from Mount Sinai in Egypt. A surprising namesake for a frosty little town that still feels like Christmas in February. It was the significance of this location that led the surprisingly recent King Carol I to build his castle here in 1873. He also, in perhaps what was a less than regal move, chose to build a casino here in 1912. If you think about it, it must have been kind of strange to see a king playing cards. And although in the next shot I might have gotten away with you thinking I had snow on my nose, I don't mind telling you, it's coffee. So I'm starting my journey in the foothills of the Carpathian Mountains in a snowy little city called Sinaia. Behind me is Pelish Castle and it's the castle that belonged to the first king of Romania. And we're going to go take a look inside. King Carol comes with quite an interesting story. After Romania's own royal was exiled, they chose to look abroad for a suitable replacement, eventually settling on the non-Romanian <gasps> Prince Karl Eitel Frederick Zephyrinus Ludwig of Hohenzollern Sigmaringen, <laughs> who you might have guessed was German. He took the gig, I would imagine, because King Carol was a much snappier name. Carol being the Romanian version of Carl, and he's also known as King Charles, as that's the English translation. This is why the castle is built in a neo-Renaissance style. And though it may sound like it's traditional, you may be surprised that our exploration starts in the cinema room. A room not always open to the public. Hello, I'm Costa. Hello. I'm Adam, very pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you. And thank you so much for agreeing to show me this fantastic castle. I'm really surprised by how modern it feels. Uh, could you tell us a little something about when it was first built? So the castle was built in 1873, starting in 1873, and it lasted 41 years until 1914, the year where, when King Charles I, first king of Romania, passed away. Charles I, as the first king of our country, came from Germany. Yeah, 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 he was chosen by the Romanian government in 1866, and he became the ruler of the country. He ruled this country for 48 years, so he had the longest reign in our country. So the castle's surprisingly recent then. Would he have um, enjoyed luxuries like modern technology slightly? Because that was just starting to come into the, the, the foreground then. So King Charles V wanted to surprise his guests. So this is why the castle, it is so, so modern, with a lot of facilities. It was the first castle completely electrified in Europe. It had central heating system from the very beginning. <laughs> Hot and cool running water, telephone, telegraph, storage. After 1900, it has two electric elevators, a central vacuum cleaner system. Also, an opening ceiling in the castle to see the sky from inside. And also, uh, at the other hall in 1883, which was converted in 1906 in a cinema room. So as we can see now, we are in the cinema <laughs> room. <laughs> well, it's absolutely beautiful. And do you know what kind of things they would have watched in here? So sort of French and German films, yeah, because mm. Lumiere Brothers invented the projector. But in 1911, King Charles I watched in here the first Romanian movie entitled The Independence of Romania. It was a 70-minute white and black silent movie. Fascinating. So the projector would have been over there? Yeah, over there was uh, the royal box. And right behind, you're going to see four holes in the wall. Oh, you can, so, yeah. And that, I suppose that would have been for where they were changing the reels for longer yeah. films. Fantastic. 
Okay, and it, it would have been projected on this beautiful stage, which is really... Yeah, the over there was a white curtain back then, yeah, for the projector, but now it should be seen an old Flemish tapestry. But you didn't? Yeah, you know what? Even if this room was transformed into a movie theater, they kept the stage, yeah, mm. for uh, theater places. But I have a question for you. Go ahead. Do you know what's this one here? Because for sure, that's not just the decoration. And it's, it's not an egg, <laughs> a large <laughs> egg. Um, I have no idea, I, I can't guess. This is a souffleur box. I don't even know what that is once you've told me. <laughs> so, because uh, at the very beginning in the history of theater, a theater place lasts like four or five hours, so it was impossible to remember all your lines. So <laughs> someone, yeah, who's reading was standing under the stage, and the, the actress can say only can see only their face. Yeah, and if you forgot your lines, he have to tell you <laughs> the <laughs> lines. So they were cheating from that time. So How about this? A little man hiding under there feeding yeah. people lines. Wow, that must be <laughs> fascinating. I sometimes wish I had someone to feed me <laughs> lines. <laughs> <laughs> on, on this stage also played the best French actress, Sarah Bernard. Wow. And what kind of plays would they have done? Things like Shakespeare? Yeah, she really, yeah, the royal family prefer uh, English places. But also Sarah Bernard come here with some French uh, uh, places. So the best of Europe would have, would yeah, have come course. here. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Now, if you could just stop pretending that you're a royal watching an old movie for just one second, Costin is going to take us on a bit of a tour through the castle. What you might expect to see on a day trip here. So passing through the weapons room, we're going to see in here the most impressive weapons that belong to King Charles the first, first king of Romania. We're gonna see here ceremonial weapons and probably the most impressive one is the one up there, which is a Turkish shamshir. It's made of uh, silver, gold plated, and it's covered with shark skin. How did it get here? It was a gift for the king. Really? Yeah, from the Sultan Abdulaziz. So while the king was here, he'd meet all these famous kings and sultans, would he? So when King Charles I came in Romania, Romania was not an independent country. We pay taxes to the Ottomans. So when you become the ruler of Romania, you should go to the sultan and he give to you the sword of ruling. Have to continue the visit to the king's office, which is uh, probably the most important room of the castle. Now, the king's office is decorated in German or Renaissance style. This king was from Germany, so he wants to bring here a part of Germany. We're going to see the king's desk. And also on the same part of the room, there is to be seen the reading desk used for official audiences and also a cozy corner used for private or personal meetings with the prime minister. One of the most important rooms in the castle is also the king's library. King's collection counted 40,000 books. Now in here, there are just 400. Most of the books are now at the National Library in Bucharest and the Romanian Academy Library too. The books are about history, geography, literature, philosophy, and those were written in four languages, German, English, French, and Romanian. This because King spoke those four languages. Very important to be noticed, in this room, there is of course, a secret door. Over here, the second bookcase, where are to be seen Four shelves, there are not real books, are just book covers linked together. This is the door, on the other side there is a spiral staircase which leads to the royal apartment. So it was the shortcut from the royal apartment to the king's office. Now the door is locked because the staircase is in preservation, but there is no like in movies, we don't have to pull any book for open the door. There is a button right here down and when you press this one, the door opens inside. Now we passed in the old music room. You're gonna see also the Queen's uh, German piano, Beckstein, the Italian harp. And on the table, there is a violin which belonged to the last king of Romania, even if Queen Elizabeth also knows to play violin. So now we enter in the Florentine Hall, an Italian room inspired by Palazzo Vecchio where the fireplace is made of the best marble in the world, Italian Carrara marble, and there are to be seen three bronze statues, which are copies after Michelangelo Bonarotti. 
The two chandeliers of the room and also the mirror are adorned with the best glass in the world, Italian Murano glass. So the purpose why the mirror is so high is to reflect the painting which is in the center of the sitting. Now we can see the royal dining room, a place where the royal members and their guests used to serve lunch and dinner. At the Romania royal family they consider breakfast as a private meal of the day, so this is why each apartment had its own breakfast room or breakfast place. The table in there is extendable from 12 up to 36 seats. Yes, it's an extender. Yeah. And because the kitchen was in the basement, the food brings up with a dumb waiter, an electric one which was right behind the cardboard in the background. The whole furniture inside was made in Germany. That's good, yeah? Tiring. <laughs> this is a concert hall, and nowadays in here there is a temporary exhibition about the moment of coronation of King Ferdinand and Queen Marie. Very important to be noticed in this room, it is the royal clock, the king, which is in here. This one was made in Paris, and it was made especially for the moment of the coronation in Alba Iulia, the moment when all the European countries recognized the great union of Romania with all the territories inhabited by Romanians. So this guy must have spent all of his life being absolutely lavished in luxury. Yeah, but it was not so like that one. This was made just for show, for the moment of the coronation. Yeah. Instead, King Charles, King Charles I and also King Ferdinand, the one who wore this one, were, they were uh, dressed like uh, military. Yeah, so all the time they are just in military stuff. And so if he's a German king and he, was, he came to Romania, is it true that he was like a hired king? Uh, could you tell the story of how he came from Germany to Romania? First king of Romania was elected by uh, the government of Romania. We want to link diplomatic and military alliances between of the European powers. Mm. And the best choice for us was to prove here a foreign king. And as we know, in all the Europe, the monarchy starts in Germany. So this is probably why we want a German king. To feel so, sort of connected to the rest of Europe. To the rest of and Europe, of course. this traditional sense of monarchy. Yeah. And it worked because the people loved him, right? Yeah, people. At the very beginning, it was not like that, because imagine that in a country, in, we can say, sort of the gates of the Orient country, they say, because oh, the okay. Orient starts in Turkey. And Turkey back then, or Ottoman Empire back then, was nearby. So they were a Come a foreign king. Mm. So it was not so good at the very beginning. Yeah? yeah. But they saw that he was the one who modernized the country. So we can speak about a modern Romania only during his reign and after that. Yeah. It's almost like uh, Romania has had a very slow and gradual trip to Europe without moving at all. <laughs> yeah, it was hard beginning. But after he came here, yeah, we become one of the European powers, even if Romania was a small country. Amazing. And though it was King Carol that commissioned the castle, it was actually his nephew and successor, whose fancy cloak that was, that would go on to enjoy its completion. King Ferdinand became king in 1914, the same year the castle was completed, got it for Carol, but it was him who had gone to be the king during World War I. Despite his German heritage and after listening to public opinion and his wife, he brought Romania into the war on the side of the Allies in 1960. This led to his name being removed from his royal house of Hohenzollern, but this would earn him the nickname amongst Romanians as the Loyal. After the war, a grand ceremony took place in 1922 to celebrate new territories adopted by the country from self-determination rights, and it then became known as Greater Romania. And it was already pretty great. Many thanks to the very knowledgeable Kostin for showing me around this castle. I really feel like I'm just scratching the surface of Romania, but it's a great place to start, and I hope you're looking forward to doing a bit more scratching with me along my journey, metaphorically of course. Next week I'll be travelling to Conte Casino Castle, which you may know from the recent Wednesday Adams series. And if you've liked what you've seen, of course, leave a comment, do the like thing, follow me directly, you know, leave me a telegram. I'll just shout really loud, because I have excellent hearing. Until then, bye!